So my research this summer uh, aimed to answer two questions. The first one being, which physiological factors determine running performance? And the second question being, uh, once those factors have been identified, what steps can we take to improve those factors and ultimately running performance? So my research this summer mostly took part in uh, two steps. The first step being a literature review um, of existing uh, literature in the field that was looking at which physiological factors affect running performance. And uh, once I identified those factors, I performed extra research to identify types of workouts and strength training that can be used to um, most effectively improve those physiological factors. Secondly, um, I did a bit of a personal exploration on myself um, when I identified those physiological factors to see how much I could personally improve my physiological factors and ultimately my running performance. So in the literature review, I was able to identify two main factors. The first one being resting heart rate as a good indicator of cardiovascular fitness. And the second one being VO2 max or oxygen uptake at maximum intensity as being a very good determinant of running performance. So I was very interested in tracking those two factors throughout my summer. And the second thing that I identified throughout my literature review were types of workouts. And lots of researchers pointed to workouts like high intensity interval training and tempo runs that were good for improving VO2 max and dropping your resting heart rate. So my plan for the summer was to run. So I ran for um, the entire summer. And what I did was to measure my running performance. I had three time trials at the beginning, the middle and the end of the summer where I ran a mile, 5K and 10K distance and measured my improvement over the summer. And in between those time trials, I was doing my uh, high intensity interval training and my tempo runs and various other strength training to most improve my VO2 max and my resting heart rate and see how much I could improve those factors and also my running performance throughout the summer. So you can see on this chart here to the right that over the summer, my VO2 max increased um, and my resting heart rate decreased pretty consistently till about the halfway point in the summer. And then there was a bit of fluctuation actually in the second half of the training period, which I'll get to in my discussion section. And so what did I see throughout the entire summer? Well, I saw a fairly strong correlation between the resting heart rate and the VO2, mo VO2 max, and that as my VO2 max increased, my resting heart rate decreased, and it was a pretty linear correlation. So what I was able to um, find from this was that as I generally became more fit, uh, my VO2 max increased and resting heart rate decreased, and over the summer, as you can see in the table below, my running performance also increased. It increased a little bit between the first and the second time trial, and then much more significantly between the second and the third as I, as I became um, in even better shape. So something that I could say from my research this summer is that I was able to improve my VO2 max and my resting heart rate, and that in turn helped me to also uh, have greater running performance in the mile, the 5K, and the 10K. Um, some interesting notes from my research um, included the fluctuations that I saw in the VO2 max and the resting heart rate after the halfway point in my training period. Um, and I actually came across some articles in my literature review that pointed to um, higher intensity workouts leading to a uh, higher resting heart rate in that workouts that had higher mileage or were just harder on your body require a greater recovery. So when you're sleeping and your heart rate is the lowest, your resting heart rate is actually higher than it would be if you had done a less intense workout. So I believe, I believe that if we look at my training plan to the right here, um, we can see that my two of my highest uh, mileage weeks were weeks eight and nine. And that was about the time where we saw an uptick in my resting heart rate. And you can, you can see it subsequently drops back down as my mileage um, decreases. And I think that's a good way to explain that fluctuation we saw in the resting heart rate. But another interesting part of my research was that fluctuation that we saw in the VO2 max, where it doesn't just keep increasing as I become a better runner and a faster runner. We saw a little bit of fluctuation in the second half of my running plan. And um, some of the research that I found on the wearable technology, like on my wrist here, I have a Garmin uh, running watch. Um, some of the research showed that the measurements of the, the different factors like VO2 max that uh, wearable performance technology is able to measure are not always 100% accurate. 